Hello and welcome to Art Masters with me, Mrs. Portia. Today we are going to be learning about this bunce artists. We're going to learn a little bit of history about this artist. We're going to see some slides of their work and we're going to see a little glimpse of what this month's art project will be. How many of you have ever been told stories about the Old West? It's fun to hear about Western America over a hundred years ago. There were no train stations, policemen, or grocery stores, or even freeways. Those who traveled there had to bring everything with them on horseback. What an adventure. The artist we're learning about today, Frederick Remington, told stories about the Old West, but instead of using words, he used paint. He took trips on horseback to the West and drew everything he saw. In those days, there were lots of interesting people in the West. There were cowboys, there were cavalrymen, and there were the Native Americans. Remington collected uniforms, saddles, he wanted all of the details to be right and very realistic. But why didn't people just take pictures, you ask? The camera was not used until 1850 and it was very big and not portable. So a lot of the people painted back then. Although Remington wasn't a cowboy, he painted himself as one in his self-portrait. Do you think this painting is a realistic painting? Yes, he painted himself to look like a real cowboy and there's a lot of realistic details. Remington's father was a cavalry officer, a soldier who led on horseback. His father also owned a newspaper, so Frederick learned a lot about newspapers and soldiers from his father. When he was a student at military school, he would fill all of his notebooks with drawings of horses and soldiers. When he was 19, he traveled to the western part of the United States. He loved the wide open spaces. He loved the colors of the countryside and he remembered every detail. He began to make drawings of everything he saw and never stopped. He drew the Native Americans who were living on reservations. He watched soldiers taking people to and from forts and he listened to stories about cowboys. Once he drew what he saw on a piece of wrapping paper and sent it off to Harper's Weekly Magazine in New York. It was immediately published. That's when he realized he could become a writer and an illustrator or a person who makes pictures of things. Remington painted this self-portrait on a horse in oil when he was about 29 years old. At that time, he was working for a newspaper as an illustrator and a writer. One of his first jobs as an illustrator was to travel with the United States Calvary and report their research for the Apache chief. While on this trip, he began keeping a journal or a diary. He drew everything he saw and then he wrote stories to go along with the drawings. He sent the stories and drawings to the newspaper. They were immediately published. Because this painting is a picture of land, it is called a landscape. But it's really much more than a landscape. This painting tells the story of soldiers who were looking for Geronimo. They had been ordered to guard every waterhole, hoping to catch him as soon as he got thirsty. Remington called this the Waterhole Wars. He sent several drawings colored with watercolor paints to the newspaper. Later, he made this oil painting from his colored drawings. There were other illustrators in Remington's time, but none of them could paint a horse in action as realistically as Remington could. He was able to show this action because of his complete understanding of horses. Does this painting seem quiet and still, or does it seem noisy and dusty? That's right, it seems noisy and dusty and full of action. Remington had to work very quickly to capture the horses as they moved so fast. So let's look at the background. What does Remington put in the background or the back? You might have to squint to see. There's some angry Native Americans. What is in the foreground or in the front? There's the cowboys trying to get away. By showing the horses in action, he's telling the story of what has happened and what might happen. So what do we think has happened? It looks like the cowboys are trying to get away from the Native Americans. And if we want to make a prediction, maybe they help their friend and they don't get away. Maybe they all get away. We don't know. Remington is not only showing what it looked like in the West, but all the problems people faced. How is Remington showing so much action? If we notice that the horses are not placed vertically or horizontally, like up or down or side to side. 
they're kind of diagonal. And the people are suggesting diagonal lines as well. Diagonal lines show more action. Remington used the drawings in his journal to create his paintings. They were filled with details. By turning his drawings into oil paintings, he hoped to make a name for himself as an artist. Remington wanted more than anything to be known not just as an illustrator, but also as an artist. An illustrator's painting shows what something looks like. An artist can an artist's work can be hung on a wall in a museum for people to admire. Remington felt his paintings were more than just illustrations. He worked hard to put real feelings and actions into his pictures. Remington put this painting on display in an art show to see if it would sell, and it did. He was so happy he started painting more often and his paintings were selling. He began to travel more often in order to find new ideas, and he traveled on horseback to the West at least once a year. Every time he returned, he brought back a bunch of stuff so he could paint them and get them correct with every detail. One summer, Remington accepted a job from Harper's Weekly newspaper. He was to join General Miles to Montana. On this trip, he met a good friend, Lieutenant Robertson. This is a watercolor painting of Remington's friend, Lieutenant Robertson. He often made sketches or quick drawings in watercolor. He left out the background to save time. When Remington was working as an illustrator, he liked to use pen and ink because newspapers are printed in black and white. He was working as a fine artist. He used oil on canvas. Sometimes he wrote stories to go with the pictures. This portrait was printed in a magazine with Remington's true story about how Native Americans were hired as scouts or lookouts for the army. Lieutenant Robertson was in charge of the Native American scouts. Remington did not like people to pose for him. Instead, he sketched them as they were. Remington wanted to show what life was really like in the West. That's why he sketched the cavalrymen when they were working and when they were resting. How can we tell they're resting? Well, they're sitting, they're not riding, and it looks pretty calm. Many believe that this is Remington's greatest painting about soldiers. Usually painters paint one subject in a painting, but Remington filled this paintings with a group of soldiers. Each group is doing something a little different. The four groups of men are preparing for the day. Which group is in the foreground or the front? That's the closest group around a fire. It looks like they're preparing breakfast. Why do they seem the closest to us? That's because they're the largest. Things that are closer to us appear larger and they have the most detail because they're close to us. Let's look at some of the other groups. They're a little bit smaller and not as detailed, so they look a little bit further away. By making each group slightly smaller, Remington is creating a sense of space called perspective. So in the background, his horses are painted small with less detail, and in the foreground, you have the group that's larger and very detailed. Remington was careful to show how each man was different. Some were officers, some were cooks, and some were cowboys. He loved traveling to the West because he always met such interesting people. One year, he did a whole series of watercolors showing the soldiers he met. The puncher had a tricky job of pushing and poking the cattle to keep them together. So we can see that the man and the horse are in the foreground because they're large and detailed. And if you notice, he's looking directly at us and the horse is holding his head high. Now let's take a look at the background. Do the colors give you a warm feeling or a cool feeling? They give you a warm feeling with those yellows. He painted the landscape with bright light of the desert. He puts lots of land around the cowboy to give the feeling of a wide open space. Remington painted a very different feeling in the next painting. This painting seems a little bit more sad and cold. The feeling Remington wanted to get from this picture is a feeling of sadness. He loved to tell stories and most of his paintings were based on stories that he learned while traveling in the West. Here Remington has created a picture of two cowboys looking sad and lonely at a fence. As fences were built to keep cattle on ranch lands, less and less open space was available for grazing and hunting. The barbed wire fencing marked the closing off the American West and the end of the cowboy. Is there much action or movement in this painting? 
No, not really. But in the next painting, you're gonna see a lot of action. A famous businessman hired Remington to create a painting for his home. He wanted to show life in the West. He did not want a small painting. He wanted it big and bold. This painting is over four feet high and seven feet wide. As usual, he included a story in the painting. If we look at the foreground, we see the cowboys. And if we look in the background, if you squint, you could see the Native Americans. If you look to the left, you see some trees. And that gives us the idea that they're going for cover under the trees. Now let's look at the perspective, the sense of space. He creates perspective in this painting by painting the people in the foreground very detailed and larger than the tiny figures in the back who have less detail. The horses also have all four feet off the ground. You can see the shadow underneath. Some people felt that Remington did not show the animals correctly. They said that a horse would never have all four legs in the air at the same time. However, when the first photographs of a horse galloping were made, they proved that Remington was right. The next painting you see was one of the first to be printed in a full color magazine. Up to this time, his drawings had only been in black and white. After this picture was published in color, he had no trouble selling the original painting. He was a very successful artist and he lived in a large home. This painting is about a stagecoach driver and the foreground is telling us that they're going down a steep hill. The background's telling us he's in a Western landscape. And if you notice, there's not as much detail, but that's because it's nighttime and we don't see as much detail when it's dark. The light's coming from the moon. We can't see the moon, but we know it's there. And the lantern from the stagecoach. As Remington grew older, he found that he liked to show feelings rather than details. He loved the feeling of the desert at night, so he started painting and drawing at night. What's different about the landscape in this painting? Since this painting's at night, it's not easy to see the details, so Remington left out his usual details and darkened his colors. He liked telling exciting stories about the American frontier. However, he also wanted to show the spirit or feeling of the West. To show this feeling, he decided to paint a cowboy not a specific cowboy, but rather a person who could be any cowboy. So we see the man is in the foreground. Let's look carefully at how Remington captured the feeling of the West. Let's look at the horse's tail. It's swishing. The horse's head is pointed forward with the mane flying up. And the horse's legs are working hard not to slip as it gallops down the slope. That's showing a lot of action. He's showing the cowboy in action by having his back arched and his feet are pushing on the stirrups and his hands are moving. So this picture is filled with action. In addition to capturing the spirit of the cowboy, Remington was always careful to show the costumes and horse tack or riding equipment that was used. So what problem is Remington showing here? He learned one of the hardest jobs of the cowboy is taming or calming the horse. He shows that the cowboys are keeping their distance from the horse. And you can see that the horse is very nervous. He has an outstretched neck, his eyes are wide. And now if we look at the background and the foreground, the background has less detail and not as bright of colors. And the foreground is bright and has a lot more detail. Can you get an idea that maybe they're in a fenced area? That's because we see the shadow of a fence in the foreground. By this time in his career, Remington had created over 3,000 illustrations, 22 sculptures, and more than 100 written and illustrated articles and stories. He decided to retire from illustrating, but not painting. He found magazines that agreed to publish 12 paintings, one each month, in color. The paintings did not have the stories to go with them, so they wouldn't be illustrations. Even though Remington's later paintings were published without written stories, they seemed to tell stories anyway. Let's look closely at this painting called Pony Tracks and the Buffalo Trails. What are we seeing? We see soldiers on horseback in the front, and you can also see Native Americans with them. We can tell the soldiers by their uniforms, and we can tell the Native Americans by what they're wearing as well. What does it look like they're doing? 
It looks like they're looking at the ground. Remember we talked about they use the Native American scouts? And if you notice, the background here has a little bit of less color and less detail and is barely visible, so it appears to be very far away. You'll also notice the lines of perspective or space from the wagon wheels that they're tracking, those lines going diagonally. Remington liked to show how clever the Native Americans were. Here, they're sending smoke signals, and we can see that the wind is blowing by the way the smoke is going. This painting is a little bit different than his others with less detail, softer images, and a lot more light. At this point in his career, he was adding more color and light and less detail to his paintings. He was studying the art of the Impressionist when he worked on his own style of paintings. Remington also shows the difference between the warm sun and the cool shade. He uses warm colors like the yellows and the sunshine areas, and he puts the cooler purples in the shaded areas. The next painting you'll see is also filled with light. This painting has less detail, but there's still a story about the conflict between the tribes. Look at the foreground where you have the warrior, and he doesn't look very happy. And if you look in the background towards the bottom right and you squint, that looks like that's possibly another tribe. In addition to painting, Remington also found that he liked to create sculptures. Remington was not trained as a sculptor, but he lived near a famous one who helped him work. One day he suggested he try sculpting and he used some clay and tools and soon he was creating horses in clay instead of paint. He loved this new art form and he spent a year working on his full first sculpture which he made in clay. Then he had it cast in bronze. That process is a mold made from clay then you fill it with bronze. Once it's cooled, you take the mold off and you have your bronze sculpture. Remington liked to experiment with textures, like using sandpaper to make the horse's hair. He consulted with all the best sculptors to find out about bronze casting, and he found out how to add all the details he loved to his sculptures. If you look carefully at the base of the sculpture, you might see why the horse is rearing up unexpectedly. Do you see the deadly rattlesnake? The position of the horse with his front legs as high in the air was not an easy thing to create. He had to balance it perfectly. His bronze statues made him even more famous and he created 22 sculptures in all, but he still continued to paint. With this painting, he had finally reached his goal of being able to paint the feeling of running horses. As he aged, he took fewer trips to the west. The long horseback ride and rugged outdoor life became a little bit hard for him. Two years after completing this painting, he died at age 48 and at the height of his career. His good friend, President Ro Roosevelt, spoke at his funeral. The soldier, the cowboy, and rancher, the Indian, the horses, and the cattle of plains will live in his pictures and bronzes for all time. What we're going to be capturing for our upper grades are going to be the foreground and the background like Remington and the detail on some of the landscape items. For our primary grades, we're gonna be working also on the background and the foreground, creating some Old West landscape.